The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So this takes place in the late 1970s. Rav in Eretz Yisrael, a modern Orthodox congregation. He noticed that there's always one person there that leaves, literally, right by Birchus Cohen. And he walks out, and he doesn't return. He tried speaking to him many times. This is a phenomenal bracha. Birchus Cohen is a bracha from HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. God himself is giving it a bracha. What are you, what are you, what are you walking out for? To no avail. He, he just kept, every time he just walked out, he figures, you know what? The Rav says, I'll invite him for lunch, for Shabbos. This way he'll have to stay, and uh, you know, we'll see what's going on. Well, he invites him, he accepts the invitation. And then, again, by Musaf on Shabbos, by Birkus Koyanim, he walks out. He figures, all right, I guess that's it. He's not coming to me. But then after davening, when he goes out in the hallway, the Rav sees him there. Okay, fine. So doesn't say anything, and they walk home, and they have a wonderful meal, a nice amount of wine. The guy's in an, an expansive mood. He's, he's happy, let's put it that way. So the Rav feels it's a good time to ask him. He says, let me ask you a question, please. Why is it that you always leave by Birkas Kohen? And all of a sudden, the demeanor of this person changes immediately. And he looks at the Rav. And he says, you know, I'm going to tell you something I've never told anyone. He says, when I was in the camps, we were in a, a, a big bunker, 800 people. Trust me, we're like sardines, packed like sardines. Can't imagine the conditions. But there was an elderly Jew there, Talmud Chacham, a holy man. He just exuded such faith. He would comfort us. He would give us chizuk. He, would, he was just an incredibly holy Jew. And one day he walks in, he says, you know, Rabosai, in two weeks, it's Pesach. Yeah. Oh, we got to have some matzah. We're going to make a Seder and we're going to have some matzah. We're going to give out a little, little tiny speck to everybody here. People looking like, you're crazy. How are you going to do that? So he turns to somebody, he says, don't you work in the kitchen? Do you think you can bake two matzahs? Can bring it to us? Looks and bake two matzahs. I'm in the kitchen. Matzah easy. Matzah. What? What? But you know what? He says, I'm going to try. And lo and behold, miracle of miracles, he was able to do it. Comes Pesach night. They got the two matzahs. Everybody is around. I mean, there's hundreds of people there. This man knew the Haggadah by heart, word for word, from the beginning to the end. They get up to Achilles Matzah, and they start giving out a little tiny, like a speck, you know, to everybody, just to taste the matzah. And as they're doing it, a Nazi Yamach Shemo walks in and he sees what's going on. He understands right away. And he says, I, I want to know who is the one that orchestrated this. And nobody steps forward. He says, either you tell me who is the one that orchestrated this. Otherwise, I'm going to kill every single person in this barrack. So this elderly Jew comes up to him and he picks up whatever they wore, uh, some type of covering and shows his chest. He says, I'm the one that did it. If you want to shoot me, you could shoot me right now. So the Nazi aims at him, he cocks the gun, and then a wicked smile crosses over his face. But you know, that didn't, did not bode well. He says, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that now. We're going to take you out in the morning, and we're going to call the whole camp together, and I'm going to uh, announce your sin and then I'm going to kill you in front of everybody. The next day, true to his word, the whole camp is there. He's on a platform. The Nazi, Yemach Shemo, gets up and he announces his transgression. He puts the gun to his head. Before he could pull the trigger, the Jew says, please, wait one minute. I have a last request. He started making fun. What do you want, a piece of meat? You want some chicken soup? What will you last request? What do you want? So I just want to be able to give one thing to all these people that are here, my brothers, before I'm dead. Because I'm a Kohen, and I want to give them a blessing. The place was as silent as a graveyard. He sticks out his hands. Nobody can even look at him. Places all in tears. The ground that was soaked with so much blood is now soaked with so much tears. And he says, Yivarechecha Hashem, Yishmerecha, 
you know, Er Hashem Pono Veilecha Ichuneka. Yisa Hashem Pono Veilecha, Yasem Lecha Shalom. And with that, the Russia kills him right there on the spot. He says, I was liberated. And I didn't want to have anything to do with Judaism at all. And I wanted to marry a non-Jewish woman. But that image of him giving the bracha haunted me and I couldn't do it. And I married a Jewish woman. We had children and I wanted to send them to public school. But that image of that Jew giving the Kohen's bracha, I couldn't do it. And I sent him to a yeshiva day school. And for the rest of my life, Every time here in Eretz Yisrael that I hear Birchus Kohenim, I have to walk out because I want to keep the image of the Birchus Kohenim of that holy man. And I don't want it to be interrupted by any other Birchus Kohen. I'm not talking halacha now. But now at least you understand where this man is coming from. Dan Lekavschus, you never know what people are going through. You never know what their story is. Judge people favorably. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.